natural resources are our property. We have this, this idea somehow that because lots of people use them, they should belong to everyone. What it really means is it should belong to no one. Economists call this the tragedy of the commons. The tragedy of the commons arises when you have a resource. No one is designated as owner. And so everyone has an incentive to use it, but no one has an incentive to husband it, to conserve it. If you want a good example of that, go to any college campus and look at the common room on the dorm. And it's completely trashed. Why? It's a common resource. Everyone's allowed to use it. Everyone would like to use it. But no one owns it, therefore no one has a personal incentive to maintain it, to keep it clean, this sort of thing. So this becomes very important whether you're talking about water or endangered species or air or anything else. California is the fifth to sixth largest agriculture economy in the world because of water. The problem with the word sustainability is that it means something different to nearly everyone. We had an orchard in this field right next to us and last year because we had such a reduced amount of water availability we took the orchard out and we fallowed it. We grew no crop and so I took out 20 acres of walnuts. We didn't plant some other ground that we normally would have planted into annual crops like corn. And the sort of hard-nosed economic approach to sustainability is if something makes a profit it's sustainable. If somebody doesn't buy the walnuts that I produce on an annual basis, then I'm not going to grow walnuts. We produce what people want to eat. Part of the problem here is that we've got this massive shortage of water in the West, largely because the government has regulated water, rather than treating it as a, as a private resource and let the market regulate it itself. For years, San Joaquin Valley farmers have been fighting against federal regulations and environmental lawsuits that have diverted water supplies in order to help a three-inch fish. Because of environmental restrictions and at the pumps where they have to bring the water from the north part of the state, a lot of times if Delta smelter present, it can't pump that water and so that water just went out to the ocean. What's happening in California with, say, the Delta smelt is that the federal government has essentially just taken water rights. Okay, in 2014, the University of California did a study and they said there was four to 500,000 acres in the Central Valley fallowed, 17,000 farm worker jobs were impacted and it was about two and a half billion dollars of lost farm gate revenue. I have nothing against the Delta smelt. It's probably a good idea to save it. But using force as opposed to cooperation, I don't think sustainable. We've got regulations that require that we basically send water that should be going to communities, to homes, to farms that create jobs and grow food, and that water's being diverted out into the ocean, all in the name of a fish. It seems so simple. There ought to be a law. Make a rule. But to put it in law, I think is very harmful. It's gonna cause more lawsuits, more dissension. And so then you turn to politics for that, and that just becomes a mess. This just reignites the California water wars. When you impose a law, create new rules, make new regulations, you don't really necessarily know what the outcome is going to be, but often can lead to things that you never intended.